like to talk today about something that's on so many of our minds this week, the state of race relations in this country. Why am I talking about this today? Well, JFCS, as you all know, is committed to helping people through life challenges and changes. And certainly racism, bias, and intolerance is a huge challenge that not only members of our black community are experiencing, but there are challenges that all of us experience on some level and have an impact on all of us in our country and right here in our community. As Americans who live in a democracy, we all have the ability and I believe the responsibility of working hard to make this community and make our society what it should be, to make it the best that it can be. And so all of us, I think, should be talking about this important issue. And yet, at the same time, I personally feel a little bit uh, unqualified and incompetent at talking about this issue. I'm a white person. I'm not an expert on race relations or on bias. Um, and I haven't had the kinds of experiences that many of our black neighbors have had throughout their entire lives. But as an American and as a representative of a social service agency, I have serious concerns about what racism and intolerance is doing in our communities. Even if we were to believe that intolerance and racism toward one particular group wasn't our problem because I'm not black, so why should I be concerned? Even if I were to believe that, even if any of us were to believe that, the truth is that it never stops with just one group. If any group in our community is marginalized or mistreated, then we're all at risk. And we all need to be concerned about the way each of us is being treated. And that brings me to a topic that's a little bit sensitive that I do want to talk about, and that is our police. Our police in our society are given an enormous amount of power and authority in order to protect us so that we can live safely in our community. Here in Pittsburgh in particular, we've had a tremendously positive experience with our police around the synagogue shooting in October of 2018. I personally have a tremendous amount of respect for the police and admiration for the men and women who put their lives at risk every day in order to keep us safe. At the same time, I believe that when a group of individuals is given power and, and authority in our society, then along with that power comes a need for greater accountability and high, very high standards. And because of that, I believe that the police need to be given the resources to be monitored and trained at the highest level so that our American police force can be an example to the world of the right way to provide comfort and security and to maintain law and, law and order in our community. And I think that right now we are in a situation in which our police need more of that kind of training and oversight, whether the behaviors that we're seeing are accidental or if they're intentional the need for the kind of monitoring and the support that they need in order to be effective at their jobs is paramount and needs to happen now. Now, we aren't going to solve the problems of racism and intolerance in a day or a month or even in a year. This is something that's going to take a lot of ongoing, careful work from all of us. But there are some very specific things that we can all do. We can educate ourselves. We can read books, we can watch docu documentaries on TV, we can learn from experts. Here in Pittsburgh, we have some very qualified experts that can bring implicit bias training to your workplace or to your social organizations, so we can learn more about how we are guided by thoughts and feelings about race that we might not even be actively aware of. We can also speak out. Speaking out can take lots of forms. We can be posting things to social media, we can write letters to our representatives. We can have conversations with friends and family, even if those conversations are awkward or difficult, um, and if they're with people who don't necessarily agree with us. And finally, we need to vote. We live in a democracy. We're fortunate to live in a democracy. And because of that, we have a system in which our representatives will represent the beliefs and the needs and the desires and the opinions of their constituents. So if you believe that your representatives are not reflecting your thoughts and beliefs and desires, then you have the ability to get them to do that by speaking out and communicating with them. And when it's election time to go out and vote.